All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how the Raspberry Pi Pico has this drag and drop interface where you can just take a program and drag it over here and then it flashes it on the device. So in this example, we're going to talk about the USB MC MSC class, which is a USB storage class, the FAT16 file system right into the flash, and then basic UF2 parsing. Now, when it comes to this USB storage class, it's pretty simple. If you go into the config, this is the biggest thing you have to think about. This is the data size of your transfers. So what's going to happen here is the USB is going to operate in these like 512 read and write chunks. And we go here and we basically have a write command and a read command. And what's happening is Basically, it's saying this LBA is your logical block address. So which block of the disk you're writing at, blocks being those 512. And in this case, just throw in a buffer address and mem copy all it over. And same with the write. You're just grabbing the buffer data from there. So it's a very low level cache. You're just grabbing and reading data, essentially, and that's it. So when we see this, when we see this device come up over here as a storage unit, what's actually happening is it is creating a, what's happening is when it's reading and writing, it is seeing the data on there and interpreting that as a fat drive. And you can see this because this is a PCI disk. Uh, there's a SATA one over here. So never less of the medium that the data is being transferred, the data is specifying that this is a storage FAT16 device. And to help me when I was making this FAT16 um, table and uh, device, what I did was I created a partition, saved it, and you can look at it with the hex hex file loader. So here, hex editor, and here you can see the entire fat disk image. And with this, I started making the arrays that the, would be sending over the, the drive. So the first one is the reserve section for a FAT16 system. And this one is what actually tells the computer that it is a FAT16 drive. Um, and it does that by specifying the number of sectors here and that it is a FAT device system. Two crucial things. Other things that are important are the sector size being 512 and the cluster size, which is the smallest unit a file can be. And in this case, it is eight sectors. So let's see. We also have a fat table. And this just specifies whether the cluster is being used. So there are two files on the Raspberry Pi Pico, these guys. And they're getting used up here. Uh, these are basically checks to make sure that this is an actual fat table set up properly. And then we have our root directory where we um, tell the computer where to find these disks and the size and what cluster they're on. And lastly, we have the actual data. Now, as you can see, this is very large. We go up back to the disk manager or go to properties. It's 134 megabytes. And it is that big so that it is a FAT16 device. You need a certain amount of sectors for it to be considered a FAT16 device. If you have any less than this, then it's just considered a FAT12. I'm guessing FAT12 is not as supported. So to get around this, you can see I blocked up a lot of these sections. They're not one continuous piece of memory. 
And what I do is I have indexes and whenever it tries to read a specific index, I will pass it in these buffers to let it read from or write from. So here we can see if it's on the index reserved, I give it the address of reserved and do a mem copy. And we can do this primarily because most of this data is zeros. Almost all of this data is zeros. Because, you know, the Pico has neither the RAM or the flash to support a file system this big. So, but, but that is fine because all we're trying to do is we're trying to allow someone to drag over a file and then write it. So now to look at the writing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the build folder. Uh, I guess I don't have the build folder right now. Um, we're going to make a build folder. I have to use this special command to make sure it copies the program to flash and then copies it to RAM. I'll explain that in just a bit. All right, so we're gonna program the board and then we're gonna show, I'm gonna drop a file onto the Pico to see the writes in action. So let me grab this. Got a folder full of uploads. These are just simple uh, program that'll spit out a UR command when it works. And we'll have putty. All right, so when I drag over this bin file over here, you can see that it's gone through all these writes. Uh, we're restarting the Pico and then this AB hello UART is actually this program running. But if we see the writes right here, we can see what it's trying to do. So I'll put this guy over here, over here, and we can see what it's trying to do from the indexes it's trying to write out. So I've got these all marked out. So the first thing it does is it tries to change the reserve section. Uh, I'd have to see why, but then later it tries to write to 133, and that's right at the end of our data sections, right here. So what we can see is it's writing forward up to somewhere around 16 uh, sections. Then what it's doing is it's writing to the fat table and then it's writing to the second fat table, and then it's writing to this root directory right here. And at that point, once it's actually started to write to the root directory, we know that we've finally successfully written the entire file. Because the process is, it writes out the entire file with all the free sections. So it writes out all the files in the data section, then, it will modify the fat tables. And lastly, it will modify the directory. And it does it in this like backwards way because if something was go wrong up here, um, then from a file perspective, it wouldn't know that anything wrong was there. It would just know that there's, it wouldn't even know anything. It would just be, there'd be garbage data but until you've told the FAT system that your those things are occupied, and until you've let in uh, entry in the directory, uh, the file system doesn't know that uh, anything's changed inside of it. But once the file system does, we can go down to the bottom. Basically, I look for the root directory and then I restart the software. So up here, we have all these writes to the flash up here. What I have up here is the sequence of events is 
if the current page we're writing to is a mod of the sections count, basically. You take an entire flash section of memory and you divide it by the number of page size, um, then we have to flat we have to erase that part of memory uh, because the way flash works is you have to erase an entire section before you can start writing to it so what we do is if we are writing to a new section in flash we have to erase it and then we can flash a portion of the memory you can flash memory in page sizes but only if that section has been erased. So that's what's happening here. We're flashing at offset zero, and we're flashing again at section um, 100 offset. And once we're completely flashed, then we can reset this right there. Um, and this is only able to work because of this Pico copy to RAM. When this program starts up, or when you flash this program to the Pico, what it does is it writes it all to flash, and then when the Pico boots up, it reads it from flash and then writes it to RAM, and then it's completely running in RAM. Normally, if you were to flash to the section you boot from, it would cause all sorts of havoc because your program is trying to read from the place it's trying to write from, or did write from. So basically we have to run this off of RAM so that we don't collide with our actual program. All right, and lastly, if we are to flash this again, I have the U2 file, the UF2 file. So we can drag that over. Same thing will happen. Um, it just the U2 file, the UF2 file is slightly different. I've got a good write-up on or a good website for this. So if we go here, this person has a good write-up of what a UF2 file is. Basically, it's a whole block of these five 12 bytes. So they start off with two magic numbers, end with a magic number, and then have a block of data that is defined by this number. And if we look at this UF2 file, we go up to this UF2 file, open with the hex editor, we can see this magic number here that will get repeated uh, here in the next 512 bytes and in the next 512 bytes and same with this number and the same with this number on the bottom and also you can see that it's only 256 bytes because all this stuff is blank all this is blank and the idea is with this file format, you can um, you can add checksum bytes if you feel like it. Um, but in this current iteration, there is none in this UF2 file. Um, so basically, all I have to do is we go into the the git UF2 info. Is I look for these magic numbers, and if I see them, then I grab this buffer to return to parse from. So in my program I can take a UF2 file, else it's just going to think it's a bin file, and it's going to directly take those data and write it to the flash. And yeah. So I do have uh, Raspberry Pi does show off the actual code here. But it's um, it's very like minified, and it was kind of like out of my scope to actually look into this. And so that's why I um, made this my this example to figure out the process of doing this. 
And if you really want to, I'll link to the bottom. I uh, I live stream most of this, but my it was my first attempt, so it's pretty bad. <laughs>